avoiding this. So I don't know I'm what we're saying. I don't know what we're saying either. Hi guys, welcome to today's video. A bit unconventional for us. We have a handful of videos on our channel where we just sit down and talk to you, usually around big topics, big announcements, life changes, and things of that nature. Videos today, we're avoiding. Yeah, today is one of those. <laughs> it's one that is difficult to talk about to say the least. Mm -hmm. It's extremely personal. We have left um, some of the details of our life out and kept a lot of it private. But for most people, our we life- share, We overshare for we most overshare. people. <laughs> Not just for the, our mainstream audience, but to help those that are going through the struggles it's, of infertility. Yeah, for those, you, most people that find this video, you probably are just swinging on by, you are researching, you are trying to figure out what in the world is this infertility? What in the world is this IVF stuff? And maybe you found a couple of our videos and this is kind of a specific content yeah. that is very IVF specific. But right. for all of our regular family that's here that come along on our journey with our RV, with our girls, with our adoptions, with hopefully new baby coming. Yes. You guys, we love you too. And we are just so thankful that you always support us. You always love us. You always come back you're subscribed to us, you like our videos, and you're awesome too. We are just so thankful for each and every one of you. Yeah. Um, but for IVF specific, today's video, we are gonna talk about our embryos. <sighs> We're gonna talk about how many we got, how many are genetically normal, and what is the go forward plan mm -hmm. with all of it. Yes. So Alex is gonna start, and I'll be here to support her, and she can lean on me at any point. Okay. Um, to fill the gaps in the airtime with comedy and smiles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Philip doesn't. Have you guys noticed? Philip doesn't like um, dead space. I hate dead space. <laughs> I, I cut it all out. If if you've watched a vlog and there's dead space, <laughs> Alex edited it. If you've uh, watched a fast pace of vlog with lots of cuts, B-roll, drone, stabilized all well, of it. That's go gorgeous me. Gorgeous is him. But sometimes I'm like in conversations. A lull yeah. is okay. Yeah. Let's all just for a second, just be quiet for a second. Mm. How uncomfortable is that? Philip's like, oh, I hate it. Okay, so for those of you who are following me over on my Instagram, we will leave it here, Instagram and Twitter. We shared it there first because we got this information from my doctor a few weeks ago, but we didn't call or set up an appointment with the genetic counselor until today so we didn't really feel comfortable sitting down filming until we had all the information yeah um because a lot of it even now is a lot of gray area mm -hmm. um but over on my instagram i shared in a post that we were very grateful and very thankful that we have two genetically normal embryos let's go into a one two three four five we genetically tested five embryos. Our first four were from this retrieval. Our last one was added on from our last retrieval from three years ago. And I know it was three years ago because it was literally the month before we flew out to go adopt Callie. We posted that video on August 28th of 2000 and gosh, what was it, 2016, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really long journey. I mean, Kinsley came to us through adoption mm -hmm. four years ago. I She's can't not that big. That. I yeah, can't she believe is that. that. Big. And then Callie came to us through adoption three years ago mm -hmm. this week. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Callie, I love you. <laughs> With these results, it makes sense of why we've lost so many. Yeah. We pretty much probably have the very same ratio. For our age, we should have 70, 80% to be genetically normal. And out of four of the embryos we tested, technically, mm -hmm. only one is genetically normal. Yeah. And then our fifth baby from our first retrieval is also genetically normal. When we got that result back, we were I was, I was shocked that our smallest one, our little engine that could from our last retrieval, we could have transferred. Mm -hmm. But I think going in mentally, I would have already counted it as a, as a loss, feeling that way. Not saying that 
the baby couldn't have stuck anyways. Um, I do think that in Alex's mind, she was a little bit defeated about that cycle. And I think yeah. she had gotten to the point where there were so many miscarriages and so much heartbreak. So we did four transfers. Um, we had three transfers that had one embryo and then we had one transfer that had two embryos. And if you guys haven't seen that, we have playlists for all of our IVF cycles. And so when we got that message that that was a genetically normal, the very last one, as you say, the little engine that could. Yeah. It was so life-giving and yeah. heartwarming, also heartbreaking. So let's just jump in and talk about the five embryos. So first, one that was genetically normal from this retrieval is a our day five embryo. One that's gorgeous is a 4A8 a day that was biopsied and is now frozen. Okay. So on day five, they biopsied the embryo and froze it. So day five means that we were ready to go at that very first earliest day, day five. It graded as a 4AA, which is the high, AA is like the highest grading you can get. A four means it's still in the shell. A six would be, it would be fully hatched, but we're really right there. It's really good, really amazing. It is our number one best quality embryo. So that one we're extremely excited about. The second best quality one is from that first retrieval. Yes, this is complicated. So when that embryo was frozen, last retrieval, it was a day six. Well, it had to be thawed and biopsied to be tested, so it is now a day seven, and it grew from a 2AB to a 6CA in that time, so it grew a lot. It hatched into a, a six, which is fully hatched, um, but it is a CA, and per that grading, it's good, um, but a CA is less optimal, and because it's a day seven, technically, our doctor says that their clinic day sevens are just as successful um, because she changes protocols based on the specific embryo, um, but still because it's a day seven, it has a lower chance is, is, the, is the thought. But a chance is a chance. But a chance is a chance. I still take it as a day seven, but because it was originally frozen on day six, I still think little engine that could, but has gone through a lot, yeah. has been frozen, refrozen and strong, strong little fighter. It's gonna be our little fighter champ. So now let's talk about the three embryos that are very personal to us, very dear to us. Um, and this is really hard for anybody to talk about. So I really appreciate your delicacy with us, your gentleness with us, your understanding, your compassion. Um, as we navigate this and we figure out what is going to be happening with our family, it is a gray area. Okay, so to recap, we have one genetically normal from this cycle. We have one genetically normal from last cycle. So this next third embryo from this cycle is what they deem genetically abnormal. So what is unique about our situation is that it is a genetically abnormal embryo but is compatible with life, um, would be neurologically completely normal, but because of the genetic condition, the genetic counselor said the chance of miscarrying or having a stillbirth are in the 90s percentile. Is that, am I, am I saying that properly? Google said 99%. She said it's in the 90s. Um, so there are, there are children um, that there are, are grownups that are that be have, watching this that have this mm -hmm. and so it's very possible mm -hmm. um, that we could have a child um, with this condition I want to take it as though we have three babies waiting for us counting that third one mm -hmm. um, but knowing that it is such 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 a high chance of losing yeah. that pregnancy um, is hard we want to share that with you because this is some things that you could face if you're going through IVF. So the specific condition is called Turner syndrome. So instead of having two sets of chromosomes, we only have one. So it is a girl because it's just an X chromosome. This embryo is one of the ones that we would probably choose um, to transfer later. One of the things that encouraged by our doctor, by the genetic counselor, by everyone in our corner, 
um, saying what you need to do is plant the healthiest ones first to give, start. Mm -hmm. start by giving you yep. the best chance yep. from there then we go to the next one so we'll have three kids by then mm -hmm. and then we'll do the next one and then we'll have four kids by then and then we'll go to the to the next one down yeah. the line yeah it's not choosing um, to to not do anything with it it's not choosing to to do anything other than waiting so that we can grow our family with the best possible embryos right here right now in the situation that we're at it is heartbreaking um, especially the ones that we'll talk about next yeah. it breaks our hearts because we are a couple who when we got married we said we wanted as many kids as we possibly could have and then to have the diagnosis of male factor infertility for her endometriosis for her um, clotting, clotting factor. factors factor five and some other things that just kind of have contributed to um, our infertility journey it's been a heartbreaking journey mm -hmm. yes we're positive yes we have fun yes we love and are so blessed by adoption we've always wanted a big family I'm and ready so to adopt right now i'm telling you oh, what, i'm yes. ready yes. i'm ready right yes. now and i'm ready to do both i'm i'm just we're ready yeah and we're excited and we're excited what the future holds yeah. and we'll do like a how are you gonna have a big family in an rv video coming up but we we just want you guys to know mm -hmm. speaking as humans raised by humans but i was raised by us oh, i'm a human raised by humans uh <laughs> we we just have such a desire to love every single kid that comes our way mm -hmm. and our journey is extremely unique because we've been incredibly open um transparent and public and there was only one reason we started this channel it was to be an encouragement mm -hmm. to anyone out there that had um an infertility story yeah. that anyone out there that was looking for hope and healing and encouragement um to have had seven full years of infertility has been really hard. I can't even say that sentence because I know that I've had such a minute level of pain compared to you. And you've been through so much and I've seen so much heartbreak, but I've seen out of it so much strength. And I love how you love on others and I love how you care for others in the midst of their pain as well. There are things in your life that you want to do that you can't do. We want to be there to encourage you to live your best life in the midst of all of that. Having said all of that, it's really heartbreaking. This is why we didn't do genetic testing the first round with our age, with our diagnosis, when we thought it was only male factor, and when we thought we were true, solid 27 year olds. And we, when we had no money and thought, uh -huh. that doesn't and sound it didn't like make a any financial sense, yeah. exactly, that we did not do genetic testing. We just are not the norm we yeah. are have never been the norm no. so the last two embryos are what they call mosaics um this is a new part of genetic testing that everyone needs to go in and do your research learn from your doctor learn from your lab learn from your genetic counselors and you need to make the best decisions for you but mosaics is so they take biopsies. Can you hold up your hands? And we have all these cells that they're looking at. And in some of the cells, I don't need your help anymore. I'm super helpful. Um, in some of the cells, they are normal, but in other cells, they are genetically abnormal. And they either have only one set of chromosomes on, or or multiple or triple set on different different chromosomes. So with mosaics there were studies where people decided to transfer them anyways and in about 30 percent of the cases there is a live birth a child that appears to be um, genetically normal the genetic counselor said today there isn't a lot of follow-up and that is based on 100 children that are born with mosaics so it's not a lot of data lot not a lot of research not we don't understand it very well mm -hmm. Here's the unfortunate part. So they rate embryos in four categories, normal, abnormal, um, and mosaics. There is low mosaics and high mosaics. And low mosaics in most labs, depending on your lab, is um, 25%. Both of ours are high mosaics, which means 50 to 70% of the cells that they looked at um, are genetically abnormal. Our last embryo 
is even more complicated and is a mosaic and is genetically nor abnormal on three different chromosomes. And in that case, it is recommended. It is not compatible with life. With mosaics, it is up to you and your doctor. And some labs will discard um, abnormal, and I don't know what they do with mosaics. I would just say, do your research, know your lab, know your doctor, know what they're doing with your embryos. With ours, it is our decision. I don't even know where to go with that. I think it's possible for life if you have a low mosaic. Yes. Um, I know that the genetic counselor today like wouldn't give me a straightforward answer because I know they they are very careful on what, what they say. But with the research I have learned through, yeah. through my friend who's the nurse practitioner in the infertility world and she knows all the research, the chances of having a baby from a mosaic when you have low mosaic and then you usually only have a 25% chance of that baby will become a baby. Our two mosaics are what they would call um, probably incompatible. Incompatible with life. I can't even say it. <laughs> I can't even say it because I, I feel like... You want every single one to have a fighting chance. And I think the hard part is medicine has progressed and is continually progressing mm -hmm. and it's so beautiful and to I watch. And I think that's the fearful part in me is it's what like, if what they if learn? later on? And that's why right now we don't have to decide. Yeah. They will all be frozen. They will all stay. Mm -hmm. And maybe there's research that will happen in the next few years before they get transferred and we'll, yeah. and we'll learn more as it comes. It's just not something yeah. that we have to think about right now. Yeah. The gray area of all fertility treatments for us has been really challenging. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's where you're at. We believe ultimately that God has a plan and purpose for our lives and the lives of the unborn. We are being given a set of circumstances that are more medical. You know, we believe that life does begin at conception and we do believe that these embryos have life in them and we want to give them the best possible chance. We are so burdened by this um, and we're burdened with others because I haven't seen a lot of videos or information out there of firsthand mm -hmm. of what a couple is going through and how they're deciding on this no, because, because usually I, it's fear based. We and are shame based. so open books. We yeah. share everything. We are, we are, we, we, we want to be a source of hope and help and encouragement. But even this video, we, I have been dragging my feet saying, I, I don't even know what I want to yeah. say because I know there's opinions yeah. all across the board. Sure. And so again, I think I am just so thankful for you guys mm -hmm. loving on us and just rooting us on in our first embryo yeah. that we are going to be transferring one of our two genetically normal embryos. Um, and that will be in the next few weeks. And we're thrilled about that. We're crazy and when I was eight years old, I thought about being a dad and when I became a husband, I be thought about being a grandfather. I, we're just old souls. Mm -hmm. um, we're millennials, but we're old souls. We are such millennials and, and old souls, and, that's so funny. Um, I just think that whatever possibility that there is to have as many children in our home, whether by this IVF, IUI didn't work for us, other things didn't work for us, um, having a super healthy physical marriage didn't work for us in a natural context. We keep trying. But I, but, <laughs> <laughs> but adoption has worked for us yeah. and I will do anything to add to my family. I know Kinsley and Callie talk daily about having siblings and they're carrying babies around and they're saying things that I'm like, where did they learn this? Callie says every day she wants a baby and she wants a dog. And so and where is I she say, gonna where get, get them from? She gets them from the baby store and the doggy store. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Yep. Let's and they're very that. specific. Callie wants a sister, Kinsley wants a brother, and then they flip flop days. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. And I know just deep down, our desire is to just fill our well, RV for now, home eventually, mm -hmm. with lots of laughter and tons and tons of great grandchildren, yeah. and raise them and 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 teach them exactly what we show you guys. And we feel like we're rare and we're crazy and we're we're unique, in that we feel easygoing enough that we could have a big family. And we've given up a lot of our own personal freedoms and selfishness 
um, so that we can do that. And we live a life in which has been completely planned towards the building of our family and being grandparents with old hair and maybe me with no hair. And our desire is to pour into them and love them and show them um, what it means to serve and love God and neighbors and family and be a constant source um, of hope and healing and encouragement to others. Mm -hmm. That is who we are, that is what we want. Um, and so for us to have news that says two are normal and the rest aren't, um, is really heartbreaking and it really bothers me because I wanted all of them to be genetically normal. Yes. I wanted all of them from the first cycle to work, but I do know that you guys are not alone um, in your processing um, of genetic results of, um, of embryos um, mm -hmm. or even for those that are considering um, even genetically testing like we yeah. said in the first IVF cycle we didn't genetically test in this one that we're currently in we did and I want to say we have a ton of friends that have done IVF and have not done genetic testing and have been amazingly successful yes so I don't want you to look at our story and think I must genetically test so yeah. I don't have to go through what they're yeah. going th what they've gone through but at the same time we are the rarity where yeah. we had a abnormally high abnormal yeah. amount of embryos for our age. Yeah. So that is to, to be taken in consideration. Yeah. And um, we are going to be talking with our embryologist next week. And so hopefully we'll be bringing you a little bit more information on, we're at least going to be talking about our two genetically normal embryos and we'll probably still talk to her about the other ones. Um, but for her to give us a little bit more information on mm -hmm. the grading. The grading doesn't mean everything. C's get degrees, guys. Get yes. major degrees. Hey, if that's anything in but, my life, C's get degrees. But at the same time, we want to be diligent and try to do yeah. our best and try to be successful. And then hopefully train my body to say, hey, let's hold on to the other embryos. Yeah. And I don't know. We'll, we are just waiting to see, to talk to our embryologist and kind of get a little bit more detail so hold tight for that if you don't want to miss that hit that subscribe button if you like this kind of content sitting down I know a lot of you here are interested in infertility stuff give today's video a big huge thumbs up if this is the kind of stuff you like give a video a big huge thumbs up for us being vulnerable and sharing this I really was this is like the first time where I was a little bit hesitant on sharing and it's a little uncomfortable, but that's okay. Yeah. I'm thankful. I hope you know that you are not alone and we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for being here today. We love you. Go let your love multiply. Bye guys.